hot pot. I don't think I've had that either. You guys are making me hungry again. All right, this is getting stacked. Too bad Infant can't wear that ability because that would have been sick. Gratiana Soldier. Isn't that the lady that the thing? Now it's covered in grime. It's paint chipped away, and it's jewels long stolen. The soul jar rocks slightly, light flashing from underneath its lid. On its rim, you can just barely make out the name Gratiana. As soon as you touch the jar's cracked surface, you see a vision of splendor. Silks, fine food, and decadent lechery. But underneath it all lies bone and blood. The vision shifts. You see burning villages, slaughtered women and children. You see her, purging wand in hand, standing amongst it all. She throws her head back and laughter echoes in your skull. Is that the lady at the camp? A shadow falls across her and you see a large weeping face. She reaches out as if to comfort, but Bracchus drags her back. You see her fall into the mire of the swamp, trapped. Is that the goddess? As you pull your hand away, you can feel a deep longing sadness in your soul. Is it regret or just sadness for a life that used to be? Uh, I'm going to take it, put it in my backpack. Fine. I'm going to take this too. This jar glitters and glows. From within, you think you can make out the distant sound of laughter. Culinary Siberia. <laughs> With a jerk, your mind is pulled to a scene in a tavern. You see a dwarf in the center of the room, joking us all around raw with laughter. All bar the zombies who are slavishly serving food and drink. The door opens and a tall, beautiful woman stalks into the room. She's flanked by heavily armed guards. You can't make out her words, but see the fear in the dwarf's eyes. The dwarf mutters a word, and the undead lurch towards the intruder, but are cut down like wheat. The dwarf tries to run, pushing her friends into the woman's path, but is grabbed before she can escape. As she's dragged away to a tower, you hear her cursing Bracchus Rex and his whore. Even when she's thrown inside and the door sealed, you can still hear her shouts. You pull your hand away from the jar, your head swimming. You can feel the dwarf's cold terror still twisting in your gut. Ah, uh, we'll take that too. Lucky oh, find. We can talk to people. The vision fades. I can do little but condemn this necromancer's cowardice and greed. These sins can be forgiven under the right circumstances. She must have been acting against Bracchus Rex for him to have come for her like that. Keeping the dead as slaves. What a disgusting display. She deserves every punishment she got. Being locked in a tower was more kindness than any necromancer deserves. All right, lots of soldiers in here. The jar on the plinth before you seems ancient, but is in surprisingly good condition. It's covered in pictograms that you can't understand, but you're sure you just saw one of them move. Half hour drive, one way. That's not too bad, especially if it's really good stuff. The pictograms spin to life and you're dragged into a dream. You see the lizards of the ancient empire turning their backs on you, casting you out into the wilderness. As you roam, the human apes turn away from you, all but one. One smiles, one opens his arms, one says he'll take you home. Bracchus Rex. He promises power for a price. He picks off your golden scales, one by one, stripping you down to the bone. He promised you a crown, but all you got were shackles. You try to fight, try to reclaim what's yours, but a woman takes you by the hand and leads you to a tower. He promised he'd take me home, you cry. You are home, she smiles as she seals the door. This is where you belong. Your hand drops away from the soul jar, your skin prickling. In the back of your mind, you hear a small, scared voice whimper before fading to nothing. Good find. 
Kind of wish I talked to the. I saw I could talk to my the people for the other ones. Visions fade. Hey, doggo. Mama. Hey. Yeah. He committed his crimes out of pain, not malice. He ought to be forgiven. Yeah. I can't help but sympathize with him. He just wanted to go home. No amount of loneliness excuses wickedness. He helped a monster for selfish reasons. What he did shames his people. Oh, I want to know what you guys said about the other jar. Ooh. Oh, there's a jar. The soul jar stands on its plinth, glowing softly. From within, you can almost hear the whisper of a voice. Stop me from giving a few bashes, a lot of work in a tiny kitchen. There's going to sleep. Let's show her the tricks before she goes away. Oh, thank you for them five bits, buddy. Mama's nose. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Did you want some cookies? Look, Mama's on screen. There's Mama's. Mama's shake. Come in. You big dumpy foot. Good doggo. Other foot. Other paw. Other paw. This one. This one, stupid. Give me this one. There you go. Good shake. Yum, yum. You're all slimy. Gross. They, they like drool now. Like immediately. It's gross. <laughs> Alright. Let's see if we can get Jay to do a race. Come here. Sit. Race. Oh, there's a good doggo. You saw her feet. <laughs> Those are from Yuri. He thank you for the booties. Nom, 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 nom. Thanks, Yuri. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> yeah, she looks like she's doing that, huh? Praise the sun. Too bad, uh, I didn't know about... Or that... I don't know if that reference was around. That reference wasn't around. Yet when I got Jada. Unfortunately. All, although... <laughs> If it was, I might have made that hurt the command. That would have been hilarious. Doggo, 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 doggo. <laughs> You're all sorts of slimy. Got good cookies? You see, or rather, you feel a far off land. Frozen breath hangs in the air. Pine needles brush your cheeks. And in your arms, you can feel a weight. A body, dead. But you have hope. Your vision swims. You're older. But perhaps not wiser. You march at the head of a shambling host, the enemies of Bracchus Rex melting before you. The scene twists again. Now Bracchus stands before you, a beautiful woman at his side. You lash out in treasonous rage, but cold arms bind you. You're sealed away in a tower. Your screams oh. fill the darkness. Jump, this person. Gypsy! Come on, jump! <laughs> this one... Sounds like someone died. Brachus promised to resurrect them. Then you became a a weapon for Brachus, and then you found out he was a he was a bad person, and you, and you tried to kill him yourself, but he bound you. You feel a jolt and open your eyes to see the soul jar before you, lying still in the vault. Stop. Your hand falls from the jar and grips the pillar as you try to calm your ragged breathing. This is ours now. Lucky find. The necromancer's memories fade to black, but the feelings remain. Punishment must be the crime. This doesn't. They may have been a necromancer, but they did not feel evil. Misguided, perhaps. Anyone who marches at the head of an undead host deserves whatever punishment they get. One must wonder how many more lives they took, how much misery the scum caused. Okay. Uh, here we go. Oh, hey, check it out. This is the, the beginning. Wah. Dishonor. <laughs> Dishonor Whoa. on you? Dishonor oh. on your cow? I saw a, a DOS window pop up and I thought it was the game, but it must have been <laughs> loading that. <laughs> the deity's head and hands are missing, severed as if by a sword. You can't tell if this was meant to be symbolic somehow, or a mere act of vandalism. 
Look it over with great care. If you take in its chiseled details, you have a vision. The statue comes to life and embraces you awkwardly with its broken arms. Unable to resist, you're flown away into an That would be awkward. Dark. Statue coming to life. Seems to have brought me here. What is this place? Seeing spirits, a higher power has temporarily granted you the ability to see spirits. Learn to channel more source. You may one day be able to use this power ability at will. Okay. The green dot. Click. Oh, hey. Oh, is it just a big circle? It's just a big. Who are you, big glowing man? The ethereal figure before you raises the visor of his highly polished helm. Beneath it, his handsome face is weary, yet his eyes burn fierce and bright. He glowers at you with disgust. Oh, you don't like me. Pray not at my shrines. Can't say I'm surprised. You, my most wayward cub. He spits over his shoulder, folding thick arms across his steel-bound chest. You don't recall me, do you? I am Rally, prime among the seven, and father of all humans. Father of you. I preferred you as a child, pious and devout. Remember? I called you to follow me, and so you did. Hold me to an order you want no more part of. Uh. Yeah, called me to an order. Is it your upright form? A contemptuous frown creasing his face. Look at you now, my child. A killer for hire. You can't hide. I see the dead who whisper your name as they pass the threshold of the halls of echoes. And who's to blame? Who is the blame? Uh, Lucian. I hold anger towards the divine myself. I could tell you stories about Lucian that would turn your muzzle white, little wolf. Yet you choose to follow him. Lucian didn't make you into a mercenary, but nor did Lucian make you refuse to kill that elf in Fort Joy. Oh yes, I know about that. Oh, that's cool. You're a paradox, if am. And who's he knew I didn't kill him. That's cool. I chose not to kill him. Deeply into your eyes. Me. As you gaze into his deep green eyes, you feel your whole consciousness following. You notice every shade of stone within, from iridescent emerald to flecks of grey. The verdant pools encompass you. There is nothing else, nothing but Ralik's eyes. Suddenly, a vision coalesces. You see yourself, the bright and zealous crusader you once were. You are breathless, scouting through deep forest. You are racing with a message of utmost importance for the elven people. Look deeper. Make it to civilization. Too late. An explosion devastates the beating heart of the elven city. Ancestor trees thud to earth. Strong trunks crack even louder than the horrified screams. A fetid miasma pulls the air. Gasping on the fumes, you are dragged to safety by a wolf. A wolf who appears out of nowhere. He pulls you free, clawing an elven woman who gets in your way. She collapses, wheezing under the choking dust. She clutches your ankle with her hand, gripped tight as a vice. As you reach down to help, her hand falls away, lifeless. Through the haze, the death fog, you see her dead eyes, black and staring. Ooh, creepy. Look deeper. Through her lifeless eyes, you fall. You see them, legion. The thousands slain that day, those you were too late to save. The hundreds slain by your own hand since then. Mountains of corpses and rivers of blood. You see the motherless children left behind. The scarred slaves sold to the highest bidder. Choices you made, contracts you took. The army of the lost gaze at you silently, their loathing and reproach palpable. Look deeper. In pitch black of deadest night, you know not which way is up and which way down. 
vertigo spins your senses as you see the consequences of each choice you made. One damning choice after another. Until we really come to present day. The guilt you try to escape from lies here, bare, throbbing. It was waiting for you here all along, in this filthy chamber at the base of your rotten heart. Your pain pulses, ebbs and flows, undammed. I want to know more. Look deeper into his eyes. Striving to see further, but a stinging slap drags you back to reality. Ralik stands before you, gimlet eyes hard now. He slaps you again, harder. Ow! He's bitch slapped us. Pity won't bring them back. Nothing can bring them back. But you can yet come back yourself. Long ago, you turned your face away from all that is light. Turn back to me. And you could yet save others. Could save all. Ralik slaps you again, full force. Ow. He stares into your eyes with challenge. Step Ralik forward. closes the distance between you in a flash. Ralik punches you full in the face. <laughs> you feel Ow. feel sensation as the delicate bones of your oft-broken nose give way. Ouch. Familiar sensation as the delicate bones of your oft break nose give way. Ow. Hold on a minute. My shoulder needs popped or something. Oh, there it goes. Uh, my nose has been broke. He catches Stagger back. Your arm in one vice like fist and dangles you above the ground. He laughs and shakes you like a rag doll. You feel rage surge within you, barely containable. Feel it electrifying the blood in your veins, pumping through you. You feel like yourself. Just out of his grass and kick right where you know we'll topple him. Reach for your dagger. To bite at his face. <laughs> Have the fingers of your hand right into his eyes. I'm gonna headbutt him. Ralik smirks and releases you. That's it, Ben Mezd. That fierce spark of zeal is why I chose you. Why I saved you from that sinking ship. You tried to hide it behind. Oh, you Apathy, did that? But the light shines through. Embrace who you really are. Why did you become a crusader in the first place? You heard my call. My call, not Lucian's. So fight for me. I need you. The Seven didn't abandon Rivlon. We are trapped here. Powerless and squabbling. You. Ruthless son of humanity, you will be my champion in the world. You are my god woken. No Alex champion, he must be running out of options. He must be running out of options. Don't let that spark become a flame that devours you. I chose you for your wildness, yet I can leash you if needed. I will grant you my blessing, fierce wolf. It will aid you on the path out of this place. And then we will have words again. Ralik steps towards you, solemn of face and bearing. He raises his right hand and presses it upon your heart. A surge of warmth and well-being rushes through you. I can bless existing surfaces, clouds, items, and characters. Cleanse cursed statues. You may have noticed I've tried to help you on your journey. I bless the water beneath your feet. Ah, you. that was him talking. Now you have the power for yourself. And this is only the beginning. More and greater powers await you. If only you will seek them. Only one like you can wield them. Now go, God Woken. Go with my blessing. Let it remind you always of who you are. My crusader. Give to the skip to you, nothing. What expect you, you do, what do you see, time, expect me to do? I will ask more of you. But now your goal is simple. Survive. Escape the grasp of those who would imprison you. Who would break you. Who would limit your true potential, my child. You and you alone must rise above the reach of minor people. But before you lope away, let me ask. You are traveling with company, yes? 